welcome to today's Secret Dream Gap Tour Stop. Centene Corporation presents the Secret Dream Gap Tour at Centene Community Ice Center. This weekend is proudly brought to you in partnership with Secret Deodorant, the St. Louis Blues, and Centene Corporation. Today's game is between Team Adidas and Team Women's Sports Foundation. Your officials for today's game, the referees are Kelly Cook and Justina Vichorak. The linesmen are Jackie Presser and Kendall Hanley. Please join me in welcoming Team Adidas. Your coaching staff, General Manager Justin Johnson. Assistant Coach Mira Yaloso and the head coach of Team Adidas, Matt Leitner. And now today's starting lineup for Team Adidas. In goal from Lakewood, Colorado, number 29, Nicole Hensley. On defense from Downers Grove, Illinois, number 14, Savannah Harmon. And from West Des Moines, Iowa, number three, Maddie Rolfs. At the forwards from Palos Heights, Illinois, number 26, Kendall Coyne Schofield. From Vadney Heights, Minnesota, number 20, Hannah Brandt. And from Sun Valley, Idaho, number 21, Hillary Knight. Now let's hear it for Team Adidas. And now please welcome today's opponent, Team Women's Sports Foundation. Your coaching staff, assistant coach Bill Wyand the general manager and head coach of Team Women's Sports Foundation, Bill Flanagan. Now today's starting lineup for Team Women's Sports Foundation. In goal, from Deerfield, Wisconsin, number 33, Alex Cavallini. On defense, from Farmington Hills, Michigan, number five, Megan Keller. From Bullington, Massachusetts, number six, Callie Flanagan. Starting at the forwards from Scottsdale, Arizona, number 11, McKenna Newkirk. From Dowsman, Wisconsin, number 13, Brianna Decker. And from Madison, Wisconsin, Number 28, Amanda Kessel. Let's hear it for Team Women's Sports Foundation. The Professional Women's Hockey Players Association recognizes that the land on which we meet today is the traditional and unceded homeland of the Kickapoo, Peoria, Osage, Quapaw, and the Ocheti Shakoween nations. We recognize these groups as the traditional stewards of the lands on which we meet today. This acknowledgement symbolizes the PWHPA's commitment to working with indigenous communities as we re-envision the future of women's hockey. Now fans, would you please rise if you are able and join us in the playing of our national anthem.
welcome everyone into today's Secret Dream Gap Tour stop. The Secret Dream Gap Tour at Fifth Third Arena presented by Centene Corporation. This weekend is proudly brought to you in partnership with Secret Deodorant, the St. Louis Blues, and the Centene Corporation. As we welcome you into the Centene Community Ice Center, Patrick Kelly and Christy with us today. Yep. And Christy, it should be a great matchup tonight. We have four matchups so far that have gone on between these two teams, and it should be a great matchup this weekend. Absolutely. We've got so many talented hockey players on the ice today. You got 34 gold world gold medal world championships just on one team alone um, with team world sports foundation and then you've got 28 world gold championships with team adidas um, a lot of talent a lot of high level athletes that are going to show these young players that are here to support uh, what this dream is all about and of course these two games are a makeup of the two games that were supposed to take place back in March. The four previous games have gone three and one in favor of Team Adidas. Team Adidas won the first one in New York by the score of five to two. Then Team Women's Sports Foundation, they were able to sneak by with a 4-3 win at Madison Square Garden. And then in Chicago, a few weeks ago, it was Team Adidas taking both of them by the scores of four to one and six to two. As Christy, this is a bit different of a tournament than usual by the point standings, how everything works. You can get a point for a hat trick, a shutout, a shorthanded goal, or if your team scores five goals, which Team Adidas has done twice, you also get an additional team point. That, I mean, I think we're gonna see a lot of good action here today. Um, benches are a little bit shorter, but definitely gonna be a lot of uh, intense play. As it's gonna be Hannah Brandt, Kendall Coyne, Schofield, and Hillary Knight starting it out for Team Adidas. Meanwhile, it'll be Megan Keller, Newkirk, and finally Brianna Decker, who will be starting for Team Women's Sports Foundation as they're working down Women's Sports Foundation in the corner. It goes back out, trying to work up the boards as Knight. That gets blocked up by Newkirk. And now Knight working up the blue line, able to get into the neutral zone. And then a loose puck's going to be grabbed once again by Team Adidas, and they throw it all the way down. No icing as the Linwood alum, Jincy Dunn, comes after it. She's able to hand it off, and Flanagan off the boards was trying to feed it forward to Emily Field, but that's going to go a bit too far. And 45 seconds into this game, we have our first stoppage. Yeah, I think one thing we're going to notice a lot in this game is there's going to be a lot of quick transition play. And you notice in the first four games of this uh, series between these two teams, there's a lot of shooting opportunities that they're taking advantage of. And the two starters, of course, for tonight, and for first for Team Women's Sports Foundation, it's going to be number 33, Alex Cavallini, out of University of Wisconsin. And meanwhile, it's the lady on the other end who leads this tournament and wins, Nicole Hensley, number 29. And she also leads the tournament in save percentage. Also out of Linwood, and this is their home rink here. And Christy Keogh, you are the assistant coach of the Lindawood Lions. I am lucky enough to be one of the assistant coaches here, and we're really excited to have these, uh, these games here in St. Louis to bring the hype to this growing hockey town. As the Women's Sports Foundation worked behind the net, Skamora trying to work her way towards the point, able to work her way past Broat, but then cycled back down low, field, tried to throw it out in front, and that was knocked away at the last second by Schaefer. Held in at the line, shot taken, blocked, and then it's just going to go be thrown into the corner as going after that is Lee Stecklin out of Minnesota. Women's Sports Foundation has definitely come out hot in this uh, first couple of shifts here, trying to put the pressure on Team Adidas. As Team Adidas leads the standings 8-2 to two going into this weekend, and looks like Team Women's Sports Foundation, they have a big hill to climb if they want to make up that up in these two games. Has taken her herself is Megan Keller. Down the right wing, cuts towards the middle. Wrist shot taken, blocked in front. Hensley doesn't know where it is, and it's still loose. But then it pokes free to the slot, and it's going to be grabbed by Gresho. She just threw it down low, racing after it is Turner. She goes after in the corner, but in to help her teammate is Jincy Dunn for Team Adidas. And they're able to push it up at the blue line. Loose puck, going to be grabbed by Belinkis. And then she immediately loses that in a long lead pass up to the lone Canadian on the ice today. It's Houston. Riley Houston passes in low, and then the shot was taken from a hard angle. 
And that just missed wide by Kavankowski. I think that's a great uh, shot opportunity right there, trying to catch uh, Cavallini off guard with that quick shot to the top right corner. There's a pass that was intended for Andy Pekanski. It was deflected out of play, and we have a whistle of 17-13 left in this first period. Fiersoff just going to go right in front of the Women's Sports Foundation bench. This will be Hannah Brandt taking the faceoff against Decker. And Brandt was able to win that. It's tossed in by Dunn. Able to win that forward, trying to get back to the point. It's slammed back down low. But there is Jincy Dunn for the Women's Sports Foundation. Now Newkirk, beautiful outlet pass, springs forward. Now they move into the zone, a shot taken, and that was blocked high up in the air. As that shot was taken, I believe, by Amanda Kessel. Yeah, yeah. I think that line with Decker, uh, Kessel, that's going to be a line to look out for on World Sports Foundation. Uh, Decker's currently tied in second for six points right now with Hillary Knight. Um, she's just willing to put it in the net. Type the faceoff dog goes to the corner. As wheeling around her own net is Sophia Schaefer. Able to get it to Hillary Knight. Hard down the right wing. Tried to throw it towards the middle. And I believe she was looking for Hannah Brand. Unable to find her though as her stick was tied up. But then it's Women's Sports Foundation the other way as Amanda Kessel sending it into the corner. Able to get some help there. But Kessel pushed up against the boards. The pass is going to be turned away to Schofield. And here comes Kendall Cohen Schofield. Cuts towards the slot. Looks a shot taken. Big save by Cavallini as she was looking for the five hole and she shut it tight. That's a great job by Hillary Knight driving the net, trying to provide a screen there for Kendall as she puts that shot on net. And that puck actually almost comes loose. You see her coming into the zone. Buy some time for Knighter to get that middle lane drive to the net. Takes advantage of that screen and puck almost pops loose there for a second. This team Adidas was able to win the offensive zone draw, but they're forced back into the neutral zone. And then Megan Keller, good pressure, just barely staying on sides. And she goes into the corner with it, was looking for a skimmer in front, unable to find her. And then loose puck is able to be picked up and carrying it forward is Broit. Try to throw it back. It's Rolfless. The shot was taken, and that was blocked right as it left her stick. But then a shot goes, and it's taken by Panic. And that was a bouncing puck that I believe Cavallini got a piece of. Now it's going to be Flanagan. Puck knocked high, high in the air. Now back at the point. Held in by Adidas. And then they can't throw it down low. It's a good stick made there by Trevingo. Then it's taken right back. Rofless with a shot. And Team Adidas is just rolling now as they try a backhander that just went wide. Didn't get all of that one as it's pushed up by Skamora, and that should go all the way for icing. It's going to be a race for it, and they're actually going to wave it off as Dana Trevingo got there first. There's a great pace here, Christy, so Absolutely. far between these two teams. To see the extra efforts being played, what a shot right there, hitting the elbow and the crossbar. You just see a lot of little effort plays that are me being played, <laughs> that are being made right now on the ice, and it just goes to speak to the level of talent that's on the ice right now. Just able to keep it in is Pinkowski. It goes behind the net and wheeling for it is Donovan. Donovan on the boards, loses it. And Cavernisi was trying to help her. But instead, it's going to be turned over to Team's Women's Sports Foundation as they try and work it out of their own end. Sophie Turner, a long lead pass and a good one, able to find Marvin. And she just cleared his in. They're going to make a wholesale change five minutes into this period. Yeah, and something to note here, too, for those that are watching, we've got uh, Delaney Balinskis is wearing number six as well, but she's got no name plate on. So you'll see on um, World Sports Foundation, you've got two number sixes on the ice. Flanagan's going to have her name plate on, and uh, Balinskis will not, just for everyone to be able to decipher those ones. That was a last-minute change we need to be aware of. Just might as well make you aware of it as well. There's an ice in there on Team Adidas, going to go all the way to the left of Nicole Hensley. I think you've got two of the best lines on the ice right now with Knight, Coyne, Decker. Um, I think these are the two lines to definitely be keeping a lookout for into the entire weekend today. So D Team Adidas unable to get the puck out of the zone. 
It was kept in briefly. Now another attempt goes out to Hillary Knight. Further ahead to Schofield. Schofield looking streaking in his brain and a good chance there. And she maybe got one hand on her stick and got a half shot on it, but she fell against the boards. Schofield makes a nice move, trying to make a move at the circle, but loses the puck. And it's carried forward by Women's Sports Foundation. Flanagan carrying it into the corner. Kessel's there watching, trying to help. Instead, Turner able to turn it up to Coyne. And then it's Women's Sports Foundation again with Kessel. Lost it in the slot. Errant pass goes the way of Women's Sports Foundation. Now Brianna Decker on the backhand, cuts in front to Hensling, dumps over her. Ford's throwing in front again, and then Kendall Cohen Schofield again. Uses her speed and just gonna take a little backhander and make a quick change. I mean, that speed that she shows in those little moments, that's a difference maker right there. Being able to create space for herself, make a smart play, get it deep, get, her, get herself a line change. Slowly working her way out of the zone as Callie Panic taking it herself in the slot, almost had a breakaway as she was trying to get it between the D. But unable to do so as a puck behind the net for Adidas. At the line, Steckling can't keep it in as she was racing over for it. But a hard pass over to the University of Wisconsin Madison alum Pankowski. And further in, Cameron Nisi couldn't make a move to cut towards the net. It goes down low and tripped up with Sydney Boyd. And that's going to be a delayed call on Team Women's Sports Foundation. We're going to have our first power play of the game. And it's going to be to the team ahead in the standings. Yeah, you see Sydney Broat start to take that puck behind the net, get into a little battle, and just that stick gets caught. She, she knew right away. Yeah, she goes down. That ref is sitting right there. She knows that she's about to put her hand up in the air. So hopefully we'll get a uh, good power play here out of Team Adidas. So that's number 25, Jackie Greco heading to the box. Two minutes for tripping. With 12.09 left in this first period, Greco out of Syracuse University. The shorthanded Women's Sports Foundation is able to win the draw, and Megan Keller tries to work it up this near side. A good job by Rolfus was able to pinch, but she's bothered by Amanda Kessel. And then the loose puck going to be stolen by Brandon. Front backhand chance, still loose, and then a backhander went wide as it was cleared out by Team Women's Sports Foundation, and that's going to be a souvenir for somebody. As a face-off, going to go back into the zone. Smart read by Brandt there to see that open space net front. So glad that she took that to the net and tried to get Cavallini caught off guard with that top shelf, uh, far side shot. Just stopped, though. Cavallini has been sharp so far. She was tested it early. As Team Adidas able to win that back at the point, Rolfless. It's a down low, Schofield. Now over, waiting is Harmon. Got it down low, and it goes back up top. Rofless at the top of the circle, cycled for Coyne. At the top again, Harmon waiting, then trying to get it to Coyne. A good stick there made by Amanda Kessel. Broke that up, and now into the corner. Having to race after it is Team Adidas. They get it back at the point. Rofless thought about shooting instead for Schofield. She loses it, then Amanda Knight able to get to Decker. Decker shorthanded, going to carry it herself, trying to get past one person, unable to get past around Harmon. So Adidas just going to take over, and Decker quickly goes off for a change. Not too many shot opportunities on this power play yet. A couple in tight, but um, you can definitely see Team Adidas is going to try and uh, put the gas on here in this last 38 seconds, see if they can put something in the back of the net. Longly pass given up to Knight. Knight down the left wing. Able to get back to the point. Stecklin waits. Broy catches up. Now she cuts in towards the circle instead. Stecklin. Now Hillary Knight again. Goes down low. Waiting is Panic. Over to Stecklin. Back to Panic. They're looking for that one time shot. It's thrown towards the net. Stays on the ice. And it's going to be a race towards the near boards. And Stecklin in a race here with Grushro. But coming in to help was Belinskis to throw it all the way down, and that will do it for the penalty to Greco. What a great effort there by World Sports Foundation. Stayed patient, didn't bite too aggressively on that penalty kill, stayed in the lanes, and they really prevented Team Adidas from being able to get too many scoring opportunities there. It's panic in her own zone, loses the puck. 
Able to push it forward with Skamora. Now a scrum ensues for the puck on the far side. And now we have a whistle and possibly a penalty. It looks like a hooking call is going to be made on Team Adidas. And it's Cali Panic heading towards the box. That was such a quick scrum right there. I didn't even see uh, see that hook come into play. But looks like Team World's uh, Sports Foundation is going to get their, uh, or Women's Sports Foundation, sorry. Uh, is going to get their opportunity here to answer back after Team Adidas was unable to capitalize on their own power play. So they immediately send Kessel Field and Brianna Decker out there. And it's actually Gigi Marvin on the right side and Field at the point. As the faceoff was won by Marvin, but it's going to be cleared all the way down by Team Adidas. And Cavallini way out of her net to grab it. The shots are 3 2 in favor of Team Women's Sports Foundation. And they're getting the chance here as Keller tried a long lead pass, unable to find Decker. And a good job. Oh, bad turnover here at Niter. Knight took her speed four, takes a shot, and a big glove save. As I don't think Team Women's Sports Foundation was anticipating that, she just picked up her speed, then a big open ice hit. And she took down Amanda, or Megan Keller, rather. Great opportunity that Hillary Knight tried to capitalize on there. Gets a good quick shot off, but Cavallini shut the door. Uh, I think it's going to be a good quick turnover that we're going to see our first goal happen here. Just fighting for it behind the net of Team Adidas. It goes back out to the point. It's Callie Flanagan. Try to pass it down low and a good steal there. I believe that's Hillary Knight. She carries it forward. It's actually Stecklin as the pass goes over and a shot was taken. And that was by Cameron Isi. And a glove save made by Cavallini. You can see Team Adidas is trying to respond after not getting too many shots on that power play. Quick turnover there. You've got Stecklin making a good pass after the blue line, driving to the net for a quick rebound. Great shot, great scoring opportunity. Hopefully they can find the back of the net soon. Love to see some good goals going here. As the shots have been there, and both goalies have definitely been tested, but right now we don't know if you have an issue with the ice or if it's with the glass, but the officials just went over and discussed with somebody in the penalty box area, and it looks like they're going to quickly open the Zamboni entrance here, and they want to look at something on the ice. This is definitely not what they need. This pace seems to have definitely been picking up, and it seems like both teams very evenly matched for this game. Absolutely. I mean, Again, just talking about the talent between both teams, the amount of uh, world championships, Olympic gold medals, NCAA championships, uh, I don't think you can really find rosters that have <laughs> the, amount, the amount of talent and experience. Um, so it's been fun to watch and see the pace of play, uh, see the girls getting used to playing with each other because I don't think they've played in a while in preparation for those world championships that were supposed to happen pre previously in Canada. but. Um, you can definitely see there's awesome play back and forth. Of course, these are two opposing teams, but as you said, the Olympic medals on both teams, you have members of the women's USA women's national team that won the gold medal. So obviously these are girls that are going to be connected for her forever. Absolutely. I mean, 15 gold medals between both teams in the Olympics. Um, and then not, again, not including their national team play. These girls have played together for a long time in various capacities and I think there's going to be a lot of connection. For 50 seconds left on the power play for Team Women's Sports Foundation. Good quick shot opportunity to Stecklin off the face off there. Cavallini again standing strong. Is it slowly carrying out of the zone is Jincy Dunn. Give it up to Newkirk and Newkirk long pass up at the blue line going to be taken by, Kent, by Skimura. Skimura in the slot, nice backhand pass over, one time shot, big save by Hensley. I believe she got her left hat on that, but a great pass left to right and Hensley makes the big save to keep us scoreless. Wow, what a save by Nicole Hensley. That Royal Road being used, that east-west movement trying to get that pass across by Emily Field and just awesome save by Nicole Hensley, be able to get her pad on it and make the save. 
Face off, face off one women's sports foundation immediately tried to send it down to Newkirk in the low slot, but that was broken up. And then another shot taken as they try and jam it in on the left side post, but Hensley is there covering that post. Both teams gonna make changes with just 7.59 left in this scoreless first period. It's gonna be Decker going in the faceoff dot against Hannah Brandt. Decker able to win back to the point. Flanagan, the one-timer, tipped on goal, and Hensley had to get a piece of it, and unable to get the rebound was Newkirk. But she's able to keep it behind the net as Harmon was pressuring her, has her knocked up against the boards. Now goes to Amanda Kessel as we are back at even strength. Coming out is Panic. And still with it is Women's Sports Foundation. Tried to send it in front, but it's going to be intercepted and taken the other way. Breaking in is Rofless. She got knocked down by Megan Keller. Now Cameron Nisi. Tried to throw it forward. Hiller Knight down low again. Now it goes over to Newkirk on the near side. Keller tries to mess it, mix it up. Pushing up to Kessel. They can't push it out of the zone. Now they do, but it goes right back to Team Adidas. And here comes Schofield with her speed. Cutting towards the middle. Tried a shot that just hit the left pad of Cavallini and went wide. As now Hillary Knight fighting for it. Going to be taken instead by Team Women's Sports Foundation. And Kessel's just going to clear it forward. Racing after is Sophie Turner. And she's going to get some help. So they try and throw it back to the point for Greco. And said going to be taken by Hillary Knight and Team Adidas. And they push forward with it. Schofield just going to clear it in. And racing after that is Abby Roke, who leads this tournament in goals with five. Now you know, Turner. I, think, I think one thing that's going to be noticed in this game and throughout today and tomorrow is that board play is going to be crucial. I mean, you see it down low behind Nicole Hensley. That's how Team World uh, Women's Sports Foundation was able to get qu three quick shots from down low behind the net. And even in the neutral zone and in the high uh, board area, um, Team Adidas was able to get some quick puck shooting opportunities driving the net there. Rufflis just barely keeps it on this near side. Pankowski tried to work it towards the middle. Now Jinsey Dunn helping. She took a shot looking for a five hole, I believe. But Cavallini shut that close, and the five-time world champion made the save. Great job here using her body, Abby Roke, finding a way to get to the net. Looked like she maybe was thinking about making a pass through the slot there, and then last second tried to get it in five hole. Cavallini holding strong right now. Team Women's Sports Foundation was able to push it forward into the Adidas end, but taken right back over into a long pass, looking for Abby Roke. Can she cut towards the middle, looking towards the middle, now behind the net, as she gets bothered by Jinsey Dunn. And tied up Jinsey Dunn, able to take hold of it, and passes it forward for Trevingo. And she's just gonna clear it all the way down, and racing after that is Haley Scamora. Dunn, nice play to Scamora, trying to cut towards this towards the net and then she was knocked off the puck, able to get a small shot off but an easy save for Hensley. Now done again. Tried to drop it back, Brianna Decker. With Broit right by her, now in there in the corner. Able to get back to Flanagan. Flanagan waits, now walks the line, takes a shot that's blocked by a skate and then another chance taken and that was grabbed by Kessel but unable to get the backhander off as Team Adidas takes over with it. And it's Cameron EC pushing forward down the left wing, looking towards the middle, shot taken, and a glove save made by Cavallini as they were looking for Sydney Broit in front. Again, another good, quick rush opportunity into the zone. Broit doing the simplest play possible, driving that net, looking for a tip. Pucks get, puck gets through, but Cavallini just gets a stick on it, tips it up, and catches it right in her glove, makes it look easy. Declan's shot was blocked at the point. Now it's going to be a race right as Newkirk goes after it against Shaver. And said going to be taken by Cohen Schofield. Cohen Schofield, rather, as the shot was taken and a pad save made by Cavallini. That gets deflected into the corner. Is trying to work it out as Megan Keller, unable to do so, pushes a bit forward and they get it past the D of Team Adidas. 
But Team Adidas taking right back over. Steckling can't enter the zone cleanly. So Hannah Brandt just has to try and backhand it in, but that hit the side glass on the bench. And it's gonna be a whistle with just 4.16 left in this scoreless first period. This one's gonna go back to the face-off die. And it seems, Chrissy, a lot of these chances, not really shots from the point, or shots that are getting through as much, some great traffic in front, but it's just teams trying to cut towards the middle and just trying to get that dirty goal, jamming something in. Absolutely, again, that simple play, taking that net drive, trying to drag a D with you, um, opening up maybe an opportunity for a third person high to get that pass across, or even get traffic in front for that screen tip or a shot opportunity. It's going to be Samantha Donovan who's surveying her options, try to throw it down to the corner. Instead, it's going to be stolen by Abby Roke. And then throwing back behind the net. And they slowly push it forward. And it goes up to Cameron Isi. She cuts in towards the slot, tries to get the pass over to Donovan, but she couldn't handle that. In the corner, throwing in front again in this shot. That was Pankowski looking for it. And instead, goes back to Shaver. Pan Pankowski was just sneaking in through the back door there. It looked like a D didn't realize that she was there, but last second they were able to lift her stick. As Roke trying to get back up to her former teammate Lee Ste uh, from a rival rather, Lee Stecklin. As Stecklin's able to get it into Broit. She gets knocked down as the puck goes into the corner and it's grabbed by Amanda or Megan Keller rather. And now up to Skamura. She clears it in. Stecklin goes after it. Trying to push it forward and they are unable to do so as it's going to be taken over by Women's Sports Foundation at the blue line. Taking right back Cameron Isi. Loses it to Flanagan. Now taking right back, moving in, the shot taken. And that one just goes high. The one that was taken by Harmon. As now it's Scamora moving down the left wing. Throws it down behind the net. Going after that with her is Travingo. Amanda Kessel helping out as well. She's knocked up against the boards and Team Adidas takes over. Trying to push it forward, Cameron Nisi. And Cameron Nisi gonna take it all the way and throw it into the corner for Broit. Broit gonna try the far side. Brianna Decker is there. She's still on it, able to get around Schofield. And now Newkirk loses the long lead pass as Rofless tried to pass towards the middle. But it's taken by Kessel. You know, the game has started off with uh, Women's Sports Foundation pumping the gas, but you can see Team Adidas is really pushing it here in this last two minutes of play. A couple great chances here from Team Adidas as Schofield gets it back of the line. Harmon over to Shaver. She couldn't settle that, so it goes down to Hillary. Now a shot taken from the top of the circle. Gets blocked by a shin pad. And now into the corner. Goes for Schofield. She tried to throw it towards a point, but nobody was home. And it's going to go all the way down the ice. And that was a rolling puck that kind of fooled Hensley, but Stecklin was able to throw it all the way down. No icing is Cavallini comes out to play it. Dunn has some space, able to get around Abby Rope. She just throws it off the boards, and that might be an icing. It's not going to be. It looked close to the red line, but it's going to be Stecklin behind her own net. Pushed up for Shaver. Unable to get it out as Women's Sports Foundation keeps it with Turner. Has her stick lifted, Stecklin. And he stores it back up to neutralize. There'll be a race for it. Can Riley Houston get there for the Winnipeg native is able to. And it's for Roke. Roke on the backhand, looking towards the middle instead to Rofless, who can't get the shot off and has to go behind the net. Back up top, long shot taken, head under, they score! Rofless gets the rebound, but they're gonna say it didn't count, as I believe that's gonna be a high stick as Cavallini made the initial save and it went up high in the air. Just great movement here by Team Adidas. Abby Roke starting off that play down low, forcing the turnover, getting a, a good couple of passes down low, back up top, good high shot. Uh, hard to see where that puck hits Rolfel's, Rolfless stick, but it looks like they're gonna count it as no goal. See, Cavallini saw that right away. She wanted the whistle and she got it. So we'll stay scoreless with just 25 seconds left in this period. As the team of D's is just going to throw it down the ice. Flanagan will race after it. 
and maybe has time for one last push. Instead, it's going to be an icing, so they will get a fresh offensive zone draw. And Chrissy, I don't know if this is what maybe we anticipated to see a scoreless first period. We had a lot of scoring in those first four games, but you obviously take it with some very tight play. Absolutely. I mean, this game has been very back and forth. Uh, a lot of good scoring opportunities on both sides. I know the uh, shots have been a little lopsided with Adidas at 12 and Women's Sports Foundation at 7. Uh, but those seven scoring opportunities from Women's Sports Foundation have been uh, pretty, pretty great opportunities. So that's the end of the first period as Team Women's Sports Foundation and Team Adidas skate to a scoreless 20 minutes. But Christy Kehoe, it's been a great first period, but what are you going to have to see in order to get this first goal, or what is either team going to have to do? I think the goalies right now, you got Nicole Hensley and Alex Cavallini, they're both hot. They're both making some really big saves. Um, I think there's going to have to be a lot of movement across that Royal Road east-west to catch one of them off guard right now. There's been a lot more direct shots than there have been of that puck moving in tight. And I think you're going to have to catch them, uh, catch them off guard and force them to really have to move and show that athletic ability and hopefully find, find an empty spot in the net, which has been, again, pretty hard to do for both teams so far. Well, it's been a great 20 minutes and should be a very exciting 40 minutes. Make sure to stay tuned with us after the intermission, just a 12 minute intermission. You're watching the Secret Dream Gap Tour. Looking at these young girls up here, we want them to grow up and say, I want to be professional hockey players. And I want to make a living playing this game. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Our moment to come together and say we deserve more. Goals and Dreams Fund has helped thousands of deserving kids play hockey. This season, Goals and Dreams teamed up with Sonnet Insurance to surprise these young players with visits from some of hockey's best, who were excited to share surprises of their own. The NHLPA Goals and Dreams Fund is donating brand new equipment. Sonnet Insurance is happy to be covering next season's ice time. Together, we're honored to help these players embrace the great game of hockey because everyone deserves a team. Thank you so much. There's a lot of stereotypes about girls. So let's set the record straight. It's true, we love to shop. We love to dress up and to put on makeup. We love to get together and we love to talk. We love to go fast and we love to dance. But more than anything else, we love jewelry. The women's movement never stops. What motivates you the most to play for the PWHPA? Mostly the just amazing women that are in this organization. I mean, we know how great we are at hockey. We're not afraid to step into that light because we are the top of the sport. What do you hope to be remembered by? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many things that I hope to push out into the world. And one of those things is for young girls to feel like they can do whatever they want and whether it's a huge dream in two different directions or if it's one dream I think there should never be a time in your life where you have to decide you know I, I can do this or I shouldn't do this. What's your biggest piece of advice for young girls that do have a split heart as you could say or two different passions what would you tell them? It's hard to do two things at once but there, there's no one that says that you can't do hard things 
if you really love it, you'll find a way to make it happen. Um, and that's been like a motto for me is like, you can do hard things. It's going to be hard, but you can do it. Looking at these young girls up here, we want them to grow up and say, I want to be professional hockey players. And I want to make a living playing this game. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Our moment to come together and say we deserve more. HLPA Goals and Dreams Fund has helped thousands of deserving kids play hockey. This season, Goals and Dreams teamed up with Sonnet Insurance to surprise these young players with visits from some of hockey's best, who are excited to share surprises of their own. The NHLPA Goals and Dreams Fund is donating brand new equipment. Sonnet Insurance is happy to be covering next season's ice time. Together, we're honored to help these players embrace the great game of hockey because everyone deserves a team. Thank you so much. There's a lot of stereotypes about girls. So let's set the record straight. It's true, we love to shop. We love to dress up and to put on makeup. We love to get together and we love to talk. We love to go fast and we love to dance. But more than anything else, we love jewelry. The women's movement never stops.
Now, fans, welcome back to the ice. Team Women's Sports Foundation and Team Adidas. Sobriety like what? What? Super thug is dumping on a cup. And welcome back in for the second period of play, everybody, as we are scoreless between Team Women's Sports Foundation and Team Adidas. As they just change sides and get ready, we still have no goals here in this first period. Patrick Kelly and Chrissy Kehoe along with you in a very exciting first period, but it got a little bit chippy at times and not as clean hockey, I think, as both teams would have wanted. Yeah, I think we saw, again, that transition play came into effect, but um, the puck definitely was not moving as smoothly as I think we've seen in the previous four games. So hopefully things will get a little bit more cleaned up and uh, some more exciting hockey here in the second period. The faceoff's going to be won by Team Adidas. They try a long lead pass up to Kendall Cohen Schofield, but instead it went past her. No icing, though, as we start this period of even strength. It's going to be Rofles trying to work it down low, but Brianna Decker's there, takes it away from Schofield. Now Kessel trying to work it up the near side, able to get it to her. And now Newkirk enters the zone, tries to throw it into the corner. Rofles is there, though. She's able to work past one person, and now carrying it herself. Up to Hillary Knight. Knight enters the zone, looking towards the middle, and Rofles makes contact with Cavallini, but unable to get the shot off. His puck in between someone's skates goes the way of Team Women's Sports Foundation. And now Amanda Kessel chugs forward down the right wing. Got it past Steckland. Rofles was there, tries to throw it away. And said, good keep in there by Dunn. And able to get a shot of Escamora. This goes back, the long shot taken. That one's blocked in front by Panic. And it's going to go all the way down on Cavallini. I think one thing that's been great to see on these quick rushes up, you see the D getting involved in the play, getting up into the zone, trying to create some lanes, tip opportunities. Um, again, that's that high level recognition by these athletes, being able to see those lanes, not hesitating, getting up in there, trying to put the puck in the net. The D is with a chance. Now Cameron Nisi able to grab the loose puck. Works her way up to the point, going to take it herself, and now cuts towards the slot and couldn't get the shot off as it was knocked off her stick at the last second. And now Stecklin can't hold the line as that high-arching clearing attempt goes back to their point. Now Cameron Isi, nice transition, goes into Abby Rock. Rock into the corner with it, loses it, now done. Pushes her up against the boards. It's going to be Keller trying to work it forward, but a good job by Team Adidas. And they're going to keep the pressure on. Cameron Nisi. Loose puck picked up. And the slot spin around shot taken by Rock. That went wide. And the rebound going to be grabbed by Pankowski. Harmon. Try to backhand it down low. Having to go for it now is Rolfless. And it's back up to Rock. Fakes the shot. Now takes it. Looking for the tip from Pankowski. I don't believe she got a piece of it. And it was turned aside by the pad of Alex Cavallini. As Rolfleece waits and throws it in. Abby Rock racing in after it. Cavallini has to make a quick decision. Nice play to Keller and a one-two pass. Able to spring forward, Gigi Marvin. Drops it back in Belinskis. Right as she took a shot, the whistle was blown for an offside. Team Adidas is getting a lot of good movement inside the zone, uh, but the thing that the Women's Sports Foundation team has done a great job of is taking care of the middle of the ice and forcing them to keep the puck on the outside and really have prevented a lot of those opportunities where they do penetrate the middle. As Gresho tries to work her way into the zone, throws it towards the slot where it's lost and then taken by Schofield and she's just gonna throw it all the way down. 
And no one was there for a team to be able to grab it. As Megan Keller slowly works her way up, was pressured, got some help there from Belinskis. Now Team D is working up again. Boyne Schofield drops it back, shot taken. And that one was by Newkirk, but it was blocked in front. And going the other way is Kessel. So that's actually Schaefer with the shot. And now this one taken by Newkirk. And now a hold in front by Steckland. No call, though, as the loose puck goes to the top. And a good play by Team Women's Sports Foundation to prevent that breakaway. Flanagan enters down by the slot, sends it into the corner for Kessel, and slops it over to that far side. Keller gets knocked down. Long shot taken, a hard one taken by Decker, and a nice glove save made by Nicole Hensley. Nice little hit there before Decker got the ability to take that quick shot on net. Uh, you know, I asked, I actually got the chance to talk with Nicole Hensley before the game, and I asked her, you know, how it felt to be back in St. Louis, and I, it was very, very short and sweet, but it said uh, it feels good to be home. So I think uh, she's going to have some motivation here behind this game, playing in front of uh, a home crowd, and probably same thing with Jincy Dunn, being a St. Louis native, native as well. Of course, Jincy Dunn got the opportunity to play on this rink a bit, but Nicole Hensley never got the opportunity to benefit from it from her time as a Lion. This team of Deez is able to win the draw and try and backhand it all the way down as we have a penalty on Hillary Knight. And that's interference on Hillary Knight. Two minutes until the Team Women's Sports Foundation going to get their second power play of this afternoon. It's Brianna Decker using her speed. Roflace was all over her and was able to knock that puck loose. And they're going to clear it all the way down the ice. One thing I like about watching Team Adidas on the penalty kill is they are not afraid to put the pressure on. And I honestly think they're pretty dangerous right now. Even though they're a person down, they've capitalized on a couple of quick shot opportunities in the first period when they were on the penalty kill. I think they had three and one. A reminder that the standings in this series are eight and two, and you can get a point if you get a shorthanded goal. But if Team Adidas was able to get that already up 8-2, this would make that very hard to crawl back from as now it's Flanagan at the top of the point. Goes to Keller. Back Flanagan, the shot taken, blocked in front by somebody as Ed Schaefer was able to get the rebound, but turns it over to Decker as she threw it towards the middle, but getting a piece of that was Hensley, and now Decker back on it to Megan Keller. Top of the circle, now it goes to Flanagan. Far side, Kessel. Flanagan again, waits. Keller, try the long lead pass over to Kessel. That's gonna be broken up by Schaefer. And good job to use her body in the corner. She's tripped up. Decker took it right back, or Kessel took it right back. As now Flanagan trying to take advantage of the chaos, took a shot, but it was blocked again. And into the corner, Megan Keller and Stecklin. Stecklin able to push her forward to the front. Now Cavernisi, she has a three on one as they caught him on a change. Panic moves in, the shot taken, they score! Panic in on a three on one, was looking at her options and just lifts it over the glove of Alex Cavallini. And we have our first goal of the game. I think that play starts down here in the defensive zone with Lee Stecklin. Blocks a shot, Pucks go, puck goes over to the half wall. She's putting her body one-on-one, -on -one, battling to get that puck up and out of the zone. Her teammates recognize the situation. They're able to get in three-on-one. Beautiful goal, goal scoring opportunity. You'd hope on that three-on-one they'd capitalize on it, and they did. So that's a shorthanded goal for Team Adidas, and that is a point for them in the standings. And now lead 9-2, as here comes Kendall Coin Schofield immediately into the corner, uses her speed and sets it up. Back of the point, Roflace, she fanned on a shot as they were setting up the offense shorthanded, but now it's Kimura the other way. She lost it on the stick handle. And it's gonna be Roflace behind her own net. Pushed it forward to Brandt. Loose puck almost taken over by Megan, or by Emily Field. And now it's gonna be taken by Team Adidas. On the board, Harmon. Pushed it forward to Knight, who's now out of the box, and we are back at even strength. So now it goes up to Skamura. Skamura cuts all the way across, shot taken in a good attempt there to try and go to the top corner, but Hensley was ready for that and a good glove save. 
You, know, you can see that the Women, Women's Sports Foundation team is really trying to create some traffic net front with Nicole Hensley. But by the time that shot opportunity comes, it's a clear lane. She's able to, to see it. So I think they've got to really work to make sure that they put take her eyes away from the play. Off the draw, they go to Hensley, who's able to work it towards this near side. Belinskis going after it with Pankowski. And Pankowski is able to push it forward to Abby Rock. Once again, leads this tournament with five goals. Sends it down low again for Pankowski. At the point, Stecklin goes over. The shot was taken by Schaefer. That was blocked, though, by a stick. And then it's just going to be backhanded out quickly by Grusho. And right back in, Pankowski. Pankowski took a shot from point blank, and that was blocked by Megan Keller. Taken right back, goes back to Stecklin for Team Adidas. A long shot taken, and that was gloved by Cavallini, and that was almost tipped for another one that probably would have been no goal with 12.22 left in this goal game that now is led 1-0 by Team Adidas. This face-off going to take place to the right of Alex Cavallini. We have a whistle and now Play resumes as it's won by Team Women's Sports Foundation. Kessel can't sell that with her skate. So it's just cleared all the way down where Cavallini's able to go after it. Battle on the boards, able to push it forward was Kessel. Instead taking panic, fighting with Decker, unable to get there. Now Kessel helping and now Harmon joins in on that for Team Adidas. But the loose puck can be grabbed by Decker. Nice move. Trying to fully get around Broit. And she's able to and get it up to Kessel. Kessel losing it. Still loose. Bouncing puck. Now in the slot. Grabbed by Decker. She's on the boards. Tries a shot. Throwing it towards the net. Was looking for somebody in front. Stick to side by Hensley. As it's Decker in the corner again. She's just been all over the ice for... Team Women's Sports Foundation so far. Yeah, you watch the skill that she shows, especially with in regards to her skating ability. Those edges, using the inside-outside edges to really create that space for herself and protect that puck. Um, I mean, it's, it's fun to watch. No matter where she is on the ice, it's fun to watch for sure. Long shot was taken by Greco. That was blocked. In the corner again, they're able to win it back for Kessel, or Keller rather, Megan Keller. Now in the corner, loses it. Back up top, they go. Greco, they're looking for the far side as she had it open, but just missed it wide. The Keller's able to get that rebound off the boards. Now another shot taken, this time looking for the tip maybe by Field. That went wide as now Skimura takes it herself up to the top of the point. Now Lowe trying to throw it towards the middle. They're unable to do so and then can't be kept in as that's a delayed offsides on Team Women's Sports Foundation. They're going to try and make a quick change as Team Adidas gives up possession. Thrown in and racing after it is Turner, trying to force a turnover from Hensley, but instead a good heads-up play to get up to Harmon as she crosses the red line, throws it in. And Cavallini maybe got a piece of that. Behind her own net, Samantha Donovan surveys her options, moves slowly, now Flanagan. Loses it after she got the pass, and then Stecklin was able to get on top of that in her own zone. It's going to be grabbed by Schaefer. Schaefer threw it up, but too far. The Women's Sports Foundation takes over again, but it's just going to be back and forth play in this neutral zone. As that was Schofield, who lost it, but goes back for a teammate. Ten minutes gone by in this second period. Quickly up, Hillary Knight. Knight trying to make it 2-0. She looks towards the middle. The pass was blocked, and then she's able to get it right back for herself in the corner. Now she's just holding on to it as her team gets set up, trying to get it over to Brandt. And instead, it's poked forward by Women's Sports Foundation, slapped right back in by Lee Stecklin. One thing that you notice Team Adidas really trying to do is take advantage of those rushes into the zone, and that's where a lot of their scoring opportunities come from where you watch Team Women's Sports Foundation, once they get set up in the zone, it's a lot of low to high play, getting traffic in front, trying to put those shots on net. 
That's Brianna Decker. Stopped right at the blue line. Was knocked out by Rab Abby Ro Rock. Now they wanted the offside team Adidas did, but Abby Rock's going to take it right back, and she could have a breakaway. She picks up her speed instead. Going to look towards the middle, and she was trying to get it to Pankowski, but that was broken up with a stick. But still pressuring his team, team Adidas with Riley Houston. Rock in a race for it. Newkirk's going to get there first. She ties her up against the boards. And Flanagan, as well as Houston, are going to join in, trying to knock that forward. And team Adidas gets it to the point. A shot was taken. And that's Savannah Harmon, who just missed it high. Team Women, Women's Sports Foundation has done a great job of blocking some shots. I want to say they're at probably around five blocked shots today. Uh, team Adidas probably has one, but again, when we talk about taking care of the middle of the ice and protecting, protecting the house, they're doing a great job doing that. Team Women's Sports Foundation had a two-on-one there, almost turned into a goal, just broken up in the last second. But that seems to be the difference here slowly is that the defense of Team Adidas is slowly taking over and, and knocking out any chance Team Women's Sports Foundation has. Absolutely, they're, they're pressuring. They got good gap control when they come into the zone, trying to force them to cough up the puck and um, you know they've done a good job of once they force that moving the puck up the ice as quickly as possible and that's how team adidas is getting those quick rushes into the zone this will be kelly panic taking the face off against trevino and able to win that back was panic for a team they try and lo longly pass forward a nice play by panic to keep possession for her team into the corner, she throws it at the point for Harmon. Walks the point, now throws it over. Panic. Right back, Havernisi. Harmon taking the shot through heavy traffic. That was blocked. That goes right back to Harmon, who faked the one-timer. Now takes a shot, and that one just went wide. So they are doing a good job getting bodies in front, as now it's Megan Keller trying to work her way out of her own zone. She's held a bit, then loses the puck. Able to help her there was Trevingo, and she was knocked down as well, and Team Adidas grabs possession right back with seven minutes left in this second period. Dunn lost it. Megan Keller able to retrieve it for her. Tried to give it to Turner, too far off the boards, and go right to Lee Stecklin. Schofield going up against Amanda Ke or Megan Keller, able to get the better of her. Now Knight back at the point. Walking the line, shot taken by Panic, and that was deflected by a stick and goes out of play for a whistle with 6.29 left in this 1-0 game. The physical play down low, it's, it's fun to watch. Um, obviously, no checking in women's hockey, but at the end of the day, I don't think that makes a difference. Uh, you watch these ladies go into the boards, and there's no fear. They're, the refs are really letting them be physical with one another, which has been great to see. Face-off won by Team Women's Sports, or Team Adidas, rather, as Stecklin tries to send it into the corner for Brandt. Instead, it's Coyne Schofield. At the point, shot taken, just missed wide. Hillary Knight looking for the rebound. Big save by Cavallini in front, then another rebound is streaking in quickly was Hannah Brandt, but gloving it was Cavallini. Hillary Knight doing what she does best, finding those quiet spaces, pulling that puck out. Trying to put a quick shot on net, but a good rebound opportunity with two people driving the net there. Another shot from the point taken. That one blocked in front by Team Women's Sports Foundation. Now they try and get the offense going as it's Amanda Kessel waiting for the rest of her team to catch up at the top of a cir the circle. Tried to take a shot. Perhaps was looking for Flanagan on the back door, but regardless, Brianna Decker able to take over in the slot. Now wheels around herself, and the shot was blocked and goes up off the glass. Or that was Marvin who was able to grab it. Now Hillary Knight fighting. It's going to be Brianna Decker taking over. In the offensive zone, got to Flanagan. It bounced over her stick. She retrieved it and throws it back down low. And racing after that is Kessel. She's knocked up against the boards, loses it. The Team Women's Sports Foundation is able to keep it in their end. Throw it in front for Kessel, the chance, and she scores off a beautiful pass in front by Skamora. Now, I don't think Hensley was ready for that and just snuck it in between her body and her hand. Yeah, I mean, that's, again, lost her. Kessel found a way to lose 
lose her defensive player and she was able to just sit right in front that puck gets through and she sends it right home. I know Nicole Hensley's going to want that one back for sure. And just nobody in front for Kessel. And she just slowly snuck by there, past Taylor Knight, past everybody, just hanging out in the slot. And they did not see the dangerous Amanda Kessel. She was able to make it one to one with just 5.06 left in this second period. And we are back, knotted up, and with how this game's been going, why not, Christy? Kessel now with five points in this series. Three goals, two assists. Uh, definitely think we're going to see some more action here as the game continues to move forward. Spankowski took a shot from the top of the circle, trying the back, back hand on the re wraparound was rock. rock. But instead, it's going to be taken by Dunn. I mean, loses it for, for Team Women's Sports Foundation. Now, Karen Innan and Samantha Donovan. She tried to work down towards the corner, but lost it. Now Flanagan pushed up against the boards, coming to help her out as Keller, as two players from each team involved in that. Puck briefly got knocked free, now it does. Trying to get to the point to Harmon they are. Can't do that as it bounces over your stick. Skimora and eraser it with Rofless. And Skimora is able to get the better of that. She got the assist on that goal that tied it. It's now streaking in was Grusho. Grusho. Pushed up against, able to get it back down and then trying to throw it in front for Turner. But that was broken up at the last second by Pankowski, the Team Women's Sports Foundation. They're powering now and they're in the offensive zone. Somebody lost their stick, but then Turner took around and took a shot on the spin around. It's going to be taken by Pan or Panic, rather, try to two on one and Unable to get the pass off. She looked like she tried to be a little deceptive there coming in, making it look like she's about to take that shot and slip it over to Hillary Knight. Unfortunately, it got tipped there. Cavernisi, they do score the one goal for Team Adidas, and now it's thrown off the boards by Stecklin. Down low, it goes for Panic. Now Hannah, or now Sydney Broit. Broit lost it. Still in the Women's Sports Foundation, and they're unable to get it out as Stecklin's pinching now. Good pinch by her, able to get it behind the net. Kevin EC, back up, panic, heavy traffic in front. The shot was taken, it got deflected wide, and then Cavallini able to cover that up on the side of the net. Nice awareness there by Sydney Broat, trying to cover up Cavallini's eyes, getting a good screen, and then uh, gets a good tip there. Last second on that puck, just goes wide. So it's going to be Hannah Brandt and Brianna Decker taking the face off to the right of Cavallini. Looked like Brandt almost got kicked from the draw, but instead going to be taken by Team Women's Sports Foundation in their own end. Hillary Knight was hooking. She looked like she didn't intend to do that. No call. We keep playing on as Brianna Decker. Dropped it back for Flanagan, throws it in as Hensley comes back to hand it to her teammate. Under a lot of pressure there is Schaefer. She was able to work it up herself. And then Knight lost it right as she entered the zone. And Brianna Decker going to go the other way with it for Team Women's Sports Foundation. And the high slot goes to the back. Then a shot taken. That one is by Kessel. And another good glove save by Hensley. So they've been testing that for her all day so far. Absolutely. That play starts back in the defensive zone for Team Women's Sports Foundation. Kessel with a great back check forces the turnover, gets the puck, moves it up the ice, and then has the awareness to get up into the play. They've got numbers going to the net. She sits high in the open space, gets that puck, quick shot opportunity. Great play right there. Type at the draw, Decker tried to get the shot, but she fell right as she was taking the shot. And it's gonna be stolen, and here comes Abby Rock. Goes to her backhand, seems to be comfortable there as she tried a backhand shot that goes off the side of the net. Now it's Pankowski. Pankowski tied up, lost it to Decker. And then Decker's able to push it forward as Keller's racing for it, unable to get there in time. His Team Women's Sports Foundation is all over that, but now here's Decker, a long shot, and that's a hard slap shot taken, and Hensley's able to handle that, though. 
But Decker has been building towards that Chrissy all game and she finally was able to get all of her might into a shot. I, right now, I, I think it's just a matter of when. When's that puck going to get into the back of the net? She's been hunting all game. Really hard shot. Probably some of the best aim that you see in the game. Um, and you can see that she got a little frustrated towards the beginning, at the beginning of the period here, but she's starting to kind of loosen up her grip on her stick and getting some more shot opportunities. An attempted tick there by Emily Field goes wide and it's gonna be Team Adidas who throws it over to the far side. Quick keep in by Samantha Donovan. Now back down low, Broy, or Emily Field rather. No, Field. Lost it, and it's gonna be taken right back and then tried the pass all the way down for Cavernisi. No icing as is able to get there first. Was looking in front. Couldn't find anybody though. Great extra effort there to get to that loose puck and uh, get the icing called off. It's taken by Team Adidas, take right back as Panic was trying to get the shot at the low slot, unable to do so though as it was knocked away. And now it's Cavernisi, nice pass up Hillary Knight down the right wing, shot taken and nice shoulder save made by Cavallini is it's stolen right back by Dunn, slowly works it up. And it's Flanagan who throws it in. Stecklin was there for Team Adidas, but it still stays in their zone. Good keep in by Keller, cuts towards the middle and was looking for a pass to Decker. Now they throw it in front and that goes off the side of the net as they had two people in front. The team Adidas is able to clear it with just 20 seconds left. Keller dropping it for Kessel. Kessel waits, throws it over the shot. One shot taken by Keller. And she had that open, unable to get it on net though. Now another long shot taken. That one's blocked in front by team Adidas. Goes back to Flanagan, one second left and that one's saved again by Hensley. And that's gonna end the period, but it should be a great third period of play Christy is team women's sports foundation has really seemed to find themselves in this past 10 minutes yeah Patrick that uh that last two minutes there I'd say for team women's sports foundation just a lot of good quick plays that uh east west movement from Kessel up top at the point to Keller down low for the one-timer um, a lot of good scoring opportunities they they really had the pressure there on team Adidas they're gonna have to keep that going the entire 20 minutes in the third period to to get the W today so 40 minutes gone by and two goals scored between Team Women's Sports Foundation and Team Adidas, and we are tied all at one. You will not want to miss the last 20 minutes of play as you're watching the Secret Dream Gap Tour stop from St. Louis. I'm Connor McDavid here from the Edmonton Oilers. My name's Austin Matthews. I'm Carter Hart. Hi, my name's PK Subban. Every young girl deserves to have the same visible hockey role models as every young boy. So join me with the PWHPA. And it's time we put a stick in the ground and fight, fight for, for the, the future, future of women's hockey. My name is Patrick Chan. And this is Jeff Petrie. Hi, I'm Alex Dabrinka, and I'm putting my stick in the ground. With my name is Aaron Ekblad, and it's time we put a stick in the ground for the PWHPA and, and fight, fight for, for the, the future, future of women's hockey. hockey. So every little girl has the chance to dream. Young girls and young women need to see there's a future for them in women's professional hockey. It is definitely time for us to put our stick. Let's put a stick in the ground. But I'm putting my stick. We put a stick in the ground. So that they can have that opportunity. And I'm and I stick in the ground. ground. Part of the PWHPA. Or the, the best female hockey, hockey players in the world. world. My daughter should have the same dreams as my son. You got my support.
I know inclusivity in the game is really important to you and you identify in the LGBTQ community. What does it mean to you to bring that representation to the game, to this weekend and be an advocate and an ally? I, I take pride in that. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, called, called gay pride or LGBTQ pride. And it, it really is, it really is something to be proud of. You know, in our day and age, it does take courage to, whether it's come out or just speak about this topic or to help others. So I think whoever's in that community should be proud of themselves and, and who they are. Um, I think that'll help them find a, a connection to the sport, a connection to women's hockey and for them, them to feel included, not only for LGBTQ players to feel included, but for, for fans and staff and media and whoever else uh, might be watching that. We're all, we're all one big community and we have each other's back. Uh, Connor McDavid here from the Edmonton Oilers. My name's Austin Matthews. I'm Carter Hart. Hi, my name's PK Subban. Every young girl deserves to have the same visible hockey role models as every young boy. So join me with the PWHPA. And it's time we put a stick in the ground and fight, fight for the, the future, future of women's hockey. hockey. My name is Patrick Chan. And this is Jeff Petrie. Hi, I'm Alex Dabrinka, and I'm putting my stick in the ground with... My name is Aaron Eckblad, and it's time we put a stick in the ground for the PWHPA. And, and fight, fight for, for the, the future, future of women's, women's hockey. hockey. So every little girl has the chance to dream. Young girls and young women need to see there's a future for them in women's professional hockey. It is definitely time for us to put our stick... Let's put a stick in the ground. But I'm putting my stick... We put a stick in the ground... So that they can have that opportunity. And I'm nice stick in the, the ground. ground. Part of the PWHPA. For the, the best female hockey, hockey players in the world. My daughter should have the same dreams as my son. You got my support. There's a lot of stereotypes about girls. So let's set the record straight. It's true, <laughs> we love to shop. Love to dress up and to put on makeup. We love to get together and we love to talk. We love to go fast and we love to dance. But more than anything else, we love jewelry. The women's movement never stops.
Welcome back to the Ice Team of Women's Sports Foundation. And welcome back in for the third period of play as Team Adidas and Team Women's Sports Foundation are knotted up at one. Right before we start, we'd like to thank some of our partners. The PWHPA wishes to express thanks to our premier partners, Seeker Deodorant, Budweiser, the NHLPA, Adidas Hockey, Scotiabank, and Sonet Insurance, as well as the P PWHPA has launched their permanent online stores at shop.pwhpa.com. 50% of the proceeds go to the players whose t-shirt is purchased and 50% go into a pool to be divided across all players. The PWHPA also wishes to express thanks to our partners, Kipling Group, Biosteel Sports, Bauer Hockey, Tim Hortons, Noble Estates, Mars Blade, Perry, Canadian Tire, and Fresh Attitude Salads. The PH PWHPA wishes to express thanks to our partners in today's event, the St. Louis Blues and Centene Corporation. Centene Corporation, transforming the health of the community one person at a time. And finally, the PWHPA has launched their permanent online stores at shop.pwhpa.com. 50% of the proceeds go to the players whose jerseys purchased. And once again, 50% will go to a pool divided across all players. I think we're going to be in for a very fun third period here, Patrick. Uh, that, that second period heated up towards the end, especially with Team Women's Sports Foundation getting a lot of good quick chances on net. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be live in action here in a second. As Patrick Kelly and Chrissy Kehoe with you as they were just getting set to start and now right as everyone was set at the face off that maybe something with the ice after getting resurfaced. Looks like Hannah Brandt needed to go over and uh, switch her twig out to get another one here. Now I think as you uh, look around the arena and see how many seats are filled with young, aspiring hockey players, um, I was able to talk to one earlier, Emily, and asked her what it was like to be able to watch a game like this with this caliber of female hockey players in front of her. And, she said that this just makes her that much more excited to play professional hockey at some point in the future and represent her country. And to be able to see these women doing it here uh, just gets her that much more excited about it. And people have been posting to the PWHPA Twitter handle. If you're here, you're watching anywhere, make sure to share a photo because they've been retweeting that. And it's just great to see the girls all come out of the same tunnel. They're all able to go. and say hi and see some of their favorite players. And you saw some of that as well. We saw some of that during warm-ups as well, some interaction with players as with every restrictions kind of being lifted, you get a little bit more of that. Absolutely, I think it's important for the game. I mean, we've come a long way in even the last 10 years, but the journey's not done and there's a lot of work to be put in. And these ladies on the ice are, are willing to do that and represent the game of hockey and uh, you know, push it to where we need to go. And I think inspiring those young women, young ladies that are in the stands is just the start of it. As it goes to Decker in front, a nice left pad save by Hensley as Kelly was streaking in. She tried a shot that went well over the net and Team Adidas able to take over. But Christy, one thing that is paired with all these Dream Gap tours, and you had this back in March when this game was supposed to take place, is actually one second Broit gave it in and that was taken over. But as I was saying, you had been doing these learn to play camps, they had them in New York, they had them in Chicago, and now they had them in St. Louis. And what is that like to see these girls get on to play on the ice and have players that they can watch and look forward to? Absolutely, I mean, these young kids could not have been more excited to get on the ice. I was fortunate enough to be out there with Cavallini, uh, Jincy Dunn, Lauren Williams, um, and just to see how excited the young girls were to hear anything that, that these women who are pr playing professionally right now have to say, um, I mean, it was it was just awesome. It's what this game needs, and you know, getting that interaction with the community, and it, it's important to to help build those dreams. And they're they're doing that right now. This team, Women's Sports Foundation, trying to work on the offensive end. It just barely poked out of the zone. It's now done. They try to backhand it forward. It's taken by Broit, and then right back Skimura with it. Nice spin around. And she is Belinskis breaking in with her, but she was pushed to the outside. Skimmer was, and then she loses the puck. It's taken over by Cameronisi. Had the lone goal for Team Adidas. 
As Belinkis couldn't push it past the blue line, instead going in the other way, Abby Rock drops it back again, back to Broich. She takes a shot, and that's blocked in front by Team Women's Sports Foundation. That was Jackie Greco in front. Or ja yep, Jackie, and now she's going to take it herself, but then loses it. And it's Schaefer who knocked it high up in the air, but able to keep it in the offensive end, and she'll go off for a change. Kessel almost tripped up. Pankowski, good job, now pushed up against the boards. Able to break away, now looking out towards the point. Unable to find anybody is Riley Houston. Now she takes a shot herself, that was blocked by the shaft of a stick. But Team Adidas able to get it right back. Now the shot taken by Pankowski, that one's blocked as well. The Houston's able to get on it, loses it to Belinskis. And she's just able to knock off the boards and out. Three minutes into this third period, and this is ending up to be a crazy finish and perhaps even a crazy game tomorrow as well. Yeah, you know, I, in between intermissions, I was looking uh, looking online, and I noticed on Twitter that the St. Louis Blues tweeted back at the PWHPA and tried to call game with Jincy Dunn getting the game winner. So I think that'll uh, be interesting to see how tight this race is towards the end of this third period. Well, Dunn had the puck there briefly. She was able to get down to Brand, who's all tied up in the corner. Coming down to pinch and help is Dunn. She has to work her way back out as the pass goes over. Knocked down is Newkirk. But nice shot by Flanagan to change it over to the near side. Dunn racing over there, trying to keep it in. Kessel there as well, but they can't hold the line. And here comes Kenna Coyne Schofield. Moving in, she takes the shot that's blocked by the skate of Flanagan, kind of flinches a bit after that. But keeping it with it is Knight for Team Adidas. Back to Stecklin, long shot taken, that was deflected. I believe it was Hillary Knight stick that caught it and went up into the netting, but a good net for presence by Team Adidas. And that's what Hillary Knight's been looking for all game, really, is that tip. Yeah, she's been hunting in front, trying to get into those quiet spaces. She got a couple shots off in the last period, but really um, noticeable throughout the game. She's been trying to get a lot of good tip opportunities to the net, and uh, hopefully, I think she's hoping she's gonna be able to find the back of the net pretty soon here. Stecklin took a long shot that went well wide. Now Schaefer backhander in front pick, they score! On the back door is Sydney Broit. What a great play as it was tic-tac-toe, shot after shot, and Cavallini can't handle that, and it's 2-1 Team Adidas. I don't even think Cavallini saw where that puck came from, from behind the net there, out of the corner, because it was such a quick play from the corner to the high slot, and then back door, that puck was just sitting there wide open, a good, Good puck on net by Panic, and then Sydney Broit just putting it in the putting it in the net. Now Broit still out there, goes immediately after it. Now thrown in front by Cavernisi as they were looking for Panic in front. Panic also assisted it on that goal. And Team Adidas takes a big 2-1 lead, already leading big in the standings, and this win could put it out of reach for them. Escamura tried to work up the boards instead, taking over Camernisi, then streaking in there to quickly grab that away was Trevingo, and she's just gonna clear down and go for a change. Loose puck, a team of Diaz, they lose it. Now throwing in front as they were looking, I believe, for Belinskis, but she was unable to get the shot off. Now Schaefer towards the middle, Camernisi, now in tight, Donovan took the shot and her stick was being blocked as she took that. Didn't get all of it though, and Team Adidas with the turnover right back in, Camernisi. Rofless, nice move in the slot, trying to get the shot off and that was blocked, or her shooting lane was blocked rather with a stick, so she had to back up, but now Hillary Knight. Knight cycles it back. Cameron, now Pinkowski. Cycles it down low, Knight. Back up top, goes back over to Roflace, looking for the shot, that's deflected by Rock. And it goes off the glass and high. At the point again, sending it down low, Knight. Roflace exchanging with her. Moving again is Harmon. Now on that Broit, give and go. Over to Knight, one of the one-timer. Instead, she'll take a wrist shot that goes wide, and it's gonna be picked up by Coyne Schofield. 
one thing you really notice during this game, especially this rush right now with Team Adidas getting lots of shot opportunities, is they're not forcing the puck. If that puck gets into the slot and they think they have an opportunity, if somebody steps into that lane and looks like they're going to block that shot, they're being patient enough to pull it back, get back set up, try to find open lanes and get pucks on net. Um, that's just, again, high level thinking, high IQ, and that's why these ladies are best of the best. It seems almost their entire offense just runs through their defense. They are very comfortable with Stecklin and, and, guys, and people like that up there. Absolutely. Makes it a bit easier, especially being able to find open ice and they're able to exchange as well as they are. You know, I think one thing as coaches that you talk about is you're five on offense and five on defense. Um, and that really reigns true in this game. You see the D getting up into the play, getting involved, um, and that might not be going deep, but again, that trust is there, putting the puck up top, getting good shot opportunities. Team Women's Sports Foundation pressuring is done, took a long shot. He was looking for the tip of Decker, but it went well wide. And now able to pick it up as Cameron Nisi goes wide with it. Now being pressured by two players for Women's Sports Foundation. They cough it up. Vince said it's going to be grabbed by Houston. She has her stick lifted by Brianna Decker. And Decker, a nice move, pushes it forward. As it goes into Gigi Martin. Looking in front, and she couldn't get it in front. Looking for Decker, I believe. And now it's Cameron Nisi with a lot of speed on the backhand. Tried to shoot it towards the top corner. And missed that well wide as it goes off the side of the net. She was looking in front, I believe, for Grushow. It's going to be a face off to the left of Cavallini. Type goes away. Women's Sports Foundation. Megan Keller tried to give it up to Field immediately, but it bounced off her skate. It's now it's Team Adidas as Penkowski. Tried to longly pass. Just bounces off somebody, goes back to Rollface. Rollface all the way wide. Tried to cut back in front. And then right there was Donovan trying to help. We couldn't push that forward. It's now it's Kimura. Pass that was blind. Didn't find anybody except teams on the, uh, the other jersey. I would make the argument right now that Maddie Rolfs is probably one of the uh, most impactful players of the game. You know, she's, as a defenseman, not afraid to get up into the play, made a lot of good defensive uh, plays in the D zone, but then also on the flip side, when it comes to that rush, she's one of the first people that I noticed getting up into the play and trying to create opportunities. There's only one of these games that has been a one-goal game. That was when Team Women's Sports Foundation won 4-3. All those have been multi-goal games. And right now at Team Adidas, just with a one-goal lead, as that was Coin Schofield with a shot that was blocked. Immediately grabbing it is Hillary Knight, though. That's another thing they seem to be so dangerous about, is they're able to just find those rebounds wherever they bounce on the ice. Yeah, they're doing a good job of spreading the ice when they're down low and, again, hiding in those quiet spaces. So if that puck does come out, they're able to get that quick chance on net. His roll face waits. Spinning back around and is Lee Stecklin. Slowly works forward up to Coin Schofield. Now it's going to be a race for it as Cavallini just comes out of her net, able to push it forward and a good breakout. Pushes forward three on three. Going all the way wide with it is Grusho. Set back ends in in front and looking towards the slot for Turner, but now it's Kelly who takes a long shot. Rebound in front, and Hensley was down, but they couldn't get the shot on net as they had a wide open net there. And that was Grusha who just shot it wide, but now here's Cameron Nisi the other way for Team Adidas. Panic. Cycles it back, and going up top is Cameron Nisi, throwing it to the far side. And the long shot was taken. That was by Harmon, but it's gloved easily by... Cavallini, she saw that the whole way. I think in that last play for Team World uh, Women's Sports Foundation, you see a great effort play right, th right there by Megan Keller to keep that puck in, gets that puck on net, and then great opportunity for two or three of their players to get rebounds. Nicole Hensley standing on her head, um, as she has done through this entire series. But again, Team Adidas getting a quick rush, trying to get into the zone there. 
Face off one on their own end by Women's Sports Foundation. Keller looked like she was going to carry it herself. And then it was lost by Grusho, but goes behind the net. We're trying to knock that forward to Stecklin, but now we have a delayed call, and it looks like it's going to be on Team Adidas. And this is a big opportunity here for Team Women's Sports Foundation with just 9.53 left in this game. I already have a shorthanded goal on net. I believe that was Danny Cameron Easy that put that in in the last period. So, you know, you hope that Team Women's Sports Foundation takes advantage of this uh, man advantage that they're going to have, but a dangerous Team Adidas coming out on the penalty kill right now. They're going to be ready to put that pressure on and capitalize on a loose puck. That's number 27, Anna Penkowski, the three-time world champion out of University of Wisconsin-Madison with the penalty, and then a shot was taken immediately by Keller off the draw, and that was gloved easily by Hensley. As Penkowski got called for roughing there. It looks like Team Adidas is going to make some quick changes. They're going to change over the side that the faceoff will take place at. But it's about the third time this game that Kessel's made that east-west pass over to Keller. So you want to keep an eye out for that. They've been connecting really well on those passes. I think Keller's uh, looking to try and get a good one-timer in. It's Amanda Kessel at the red line. Works it back up to Flanagan. She walks across a bit. Now down low, Decker looking in front for the back for the one timer, perhaps on the back door by Keller there. Instead, behind the net, Stecklin hard off the glass and is able to send that all the way down. Kills about 30 seconds so far. They make a full change, four new bodies on the ice as Callie Flanagan works her way up. Now Decker, down the left wing, able to get past one person in, a backhander and a big glove save by Hensley as Decker had somebody but tried to go into the top corner and a big save by the Linwood alum. Decker smiling right now, a silky move as she enters the zone, gets that puck between Rolf's feet and then tries to go backhand into, uh, looks like the top right corner of the net, but Nicole Hensley making the save look easy in her glove there. Face-off one forward by Team Women's Sports Foundation and Flanagan and Decker gets set up once again. Up top. Back and forth with Keller. Now Flanagan again looking for that one-timer. Keller fans on the shot, now backhands it towards the net where it's picked up again and then thrown towards the middle. But nobody could be found there for GG Marvin. And it's going to go all the way down for Flanagan to retrieve. 45 seconds remain on their power play. Given up to Decker once again. She's been the one to kind of quarterback this power play as it's sent forward and knocked down with a stick of Harmon. Almost went on goal to Hensley. But instead taken right back by Kessel. She loses it, but Flanagan grabs it for Women's Sports Foundation, and it's in behind where Hensley had fallen, but was able to get it to her teammates, and they cleanly clear it out. Done with 15 seconds on the power play. Quickly looking in front, forced behind the net by Rolfus. Now Skimura. Down low, back up top, Flanagan. Now out of the box, Pinkowski Dunn has to hurry. They get it over the shot taken, and that one just went wide as Skimura streaks in, trying to get a re rebound. But Hensley has that covered up tight. Definitely a lot of great scoring opportunities on that power play. You can see that Team Women's Sports Foundation made some adjustments. Instead of going to that east-west pass, trying to go down low, dragging everybody down with them, getting a good opportunity back door. They control the play majority of the time compared to that second period power play that they had, but they're going to have to keep pushing on that gas pedal to make something happen here. Reminder that the PWHPA wishes to express thanks to our premier partners, Seeker Deodorant, Budweiser, NHLPA, Adidas Hockey, Scotiabank, and Sona Insurance as the shot was taken by Team Adidas. But that's blocked right before it could reach Cavallini and then trying to work it out on their own end, but a good job to keep it in. I believe that was Coyne Schofield who kept it in the zone briefly, but now Skirmura trying to work it up, and she is helped by Trevingo, who carries it into the offensive end. Drops it back, Flanagan, nice shot taken. That was blocked by a defenseman right before it reached Hensley. And Team Adidas right back on top of it. Keller loses it tonight. Now Hannah Brandt hit hard against the boards by Kessel. And it's going to be taken over by Megan Keller. Try a long lead pass, intercepted by Riley Houston. 
And now able to come in to help that is Panic. And she's tied up and Women's Sports Foundation taking over in their own end, still trying to clear it out and they finally are able to. Cameron Nisi under a lot of pressure from Keller. She was able to knock that puck loose and now Kessel joining in as well as Newkirk was in the area. But now Decker still being a pest, able to take that away. Kessel looking in front and Seth takes the shot herself and right on an easy save right into the chest of Nicole Hensley. She's been tested more and more as this game has gone on. I mean, Brianna Decker on that play, the awareness to not only get knocked down, but be able to be aware of Kessel being wide open to create that opportunity to the net, making that pass as she's already on the ice. Uh, no wonder no wonder she's uh, had six gold world championships there. It's Grusha was able to get the loose puck after winning the draw. She's tied up in the corner, tough. Trying to move forward and they knock down. No call though as Flanagan was there to help. Puck knock high up in the air and Amanda Ke or Megan Keller unable to hold the line. Now it's in front of the Adidas bench. That's Belinskis trying to fight for it. It goes over to the far side where it pops three for Rolfless. She has some speed as she picks it up and took a shot that maybe got a piece of Cavallini that goes back at the point. For Team Adidas as it's just knocked out, but there's Harmon to retrieve it. Glinskis is watching her instead. Donovan drops it for Rock. Rock winds up, hard shot taken, and Cavallini didn't even need to move her glove. and went right into it, and a good glove save there with 5.31 left in this 2-1 game. A rocket there by Abby Rock. Looks like she's trying to take a nice low shot knowing Pankowski's going to the net, but again, Cavallini able to get her glove on it fairly easily there. As Shaver won the draw, she waits for a second, then try to take a shot, they didn't get all of that as it stayed on the ice. Now it's Decker up to Kessel. Kessel has to pull up a bit, now throws it behind the net that hangs on the apron of the boards for a bit, then goes back down for Newkirk. Marvin at the point, able to hold the line, but then the pass goes right to Hillary. Now we have a two on one, it's Knight and Coyne Schofield gave it over to Schofield and she was unable to get the shot as it got lifted high in the air, but she gets it right back, shot taken and a big save by Cavallini as Kendall Coyne Schofield got her own rebound and wheels back around. That's a dangerous pair coming in and attacking on that two on one. Hillary Knight trying to make that pass, it gets tipped. Uh, great awareness to be able to grab that puck, though, and get it a second scoring opportunity by Kendall Schofield there. Face off one by Team Women's Sports Foundation. The shot was taken, and that just went wide from Harmon, and Cavallini was able to jump on that, and that's where it seems Team Adidas is most dangerous, is just on those rebounds, just off the boards, and just creating chaos in front. Harmon, bouncing shot, just went wide of the net. And picked up by Team Women's Sports Foundation, held at the line by Panic, and now Harmon with it. Tries to push it into the corner, but Ke Keller is there. Keller slowly up to Trevingo, and able to get a piece of that with Skamora, but bounced off her stick and goes all the way down for an icing. I think in this last four and a half minutes here, we're going to need to see Team Women's Sports Foundation really pick up the pace of play. Uh, since that power play happened, they really have not had as many scoring opportunities um, as they did earlier in the period. So you really want to see them start to really increase taking advantage of those loose pucks and those turnovers in the high, uh, high defensive zone there. Cameron Nisi was looking in front, couldn't find anybody as Panic grabbed the loose puck. Now a diving play made by Field, able to push it forward to neutral ice. And it's grabbed again by Harmon. Taking at the hash marks. She loses it, is knocked down, no call though, as Rollface loses it too. And that's Skimura gaining it up to Amanda Kessel. Kessel looking as Flanagan cuts in and said the shot taken in front by Skimura. And she didn't get all that as lurching forward was Hensley. They're going to need more and more of that to continue to happen in this last four minutes. A great rush into the zone, trying to look for that high 
quick tip shot into the net. I think we're going to have to pay attention here to Team Women's Sports Town Edition bench. I'm sure we're going to see Cavallini potentially get pulled here, depending on what happens in the next minute or so. I think actually Panic did a good job. She moved her leg out, made a little bit of a block with that half-hearted shot, and was able to help Hensley see that. We will keep our eye on Cavallini, as Christy said, with just 3.36 left in this game. Greco, she gets tied up, and then Decker was there to help out as Newkirk gets her stick tug a bit. Now it's Pinkowski. Backhander up to Schaefer. Right back, Pinkowski in the corner, being bothered by two members of the Women's Sports Foundation. Over to Abby Rock, looks in front, one time or another shot taken by Pinkowski, and a great save by Cavallini. She's had to be sharp. Again, great awareness with those quiet spaces. It just seems like Team Adidas is in the right spot at the right time when those loose pucks, whether it's a rebound or a, a tipped puck, they're finding their sticks and finding ways to get that puck to the net. Harmon works her way in on the backhand once again, looking in front as they have Hillary Knight parked there. Can the coin Schofield behind the net still following though, as they try to get it over to Schofield and she couldn't get her stick on that as it's broken up by Belinskis and taken over by Women's Sports Foundation. Belinskis herself tried to cut through everybody, but broken up by Harmon. Now a puck knocked up high in the air. Goes back to Harmon and slowly chipping it forward. It's going to go right back to Team Adidas. Coin Schofield. Tried to get it over to Turner was Cavallini. Goes to the point. Schaefer, big tip in front by Knight. But then a good save by Cavallini as I believe Schofield also got a rebound that went wide. And then another turnover. This time, Coin Schofield in. Looking for the pass to Broid for a second, but instead that was a bit too high. And here comes Team Women's Sports Foundation. A quick last two minutes with just a minute 45 left. Cavallini staying in her net, still in her crease. Right now is going to come back, come down to puck management. That last turnover by Team Women's Sports Foundation in the neutral zone, that just can't happen. They've got to take care of the puck right now. Looks like Cavallini was trying to leave the net, but uh, recognizes there's a turnover there and good, good response by her. I think Schaefer almost thought to just throw it towards the net. As you say, she saw Cavallini going back. She was a bit hesitant going there, and she wasn't sure when to go. But good thing she came back. And now they go the other way, and here comes Cavallini racing to the bench as it's Amanda Kessel throwing it behind the net. Racing after it is Decker, unable to get there. Cameron Isi. Loose puck poked free towards the slot. Grabbed by Women's Sports Foundation. That was Kessel, and now it's going to be going for goal, and they're going to score as that was Kelly Panic. Tried it all the way from the top of her own circle, and that just rolls into the net to make it 3-1 to one for Team Adidas, and that should end it. It's going to be a tight race in this last 55 seconds for Team Women's Sports Foundation. You hope that they can uh, get a couple of quick scoring opportunities here. I, I assume they're going to leave Cavallini out of the net. Oh, they put her back in. Um, you think that they may take a chance pulling her out, but uh, just great job by Team Adidas. Put just the entire game, they've been putting a lot of pressure on him. As Dunn's gonna bring, wheel it around her own net, Cavallini we expect to be leaving shortly as a long pass up, a nice saucer pass to Scamora. And then keeping it in was Marvin. Scamora in front and Hensley got over and had to make a quick save as streaking in was Trevingo. That's gonna be taken right back. It's Pinkowski breaking in. With Cavallini still in that takes the shot in a pad save, and Cavallini leaps forward and is able to grab that with just 23 seconds left. So we like to remind everybody that the PWHPA, which is, which is, or has launched the permanent online store at shop.pwhpa.com. 50% of the proceeds go to the players whose T-shirt is purchased, and 50% go into a pool to be divided amongst the players. As Women's Sports Foundation in the last 20 seconds wins it in their own end. Long pass up by Trevingo. Emily Field maybe one last goal as she goes into the corner with Stecklin. And Stecklin's able to knock her off the puck. Five seconds remaining. Going in front is Grusho. And one last shot for Hensley. Goes wide of the net. And that is the end of the game as Team Adidas skates off with a 3-1 win over Team Women's Sports Foundation.
Great job by Team Adidas to seal the game up. Uh, not for a lack of effort by Team Women's Sports Foundation, but I think uh, there's going to have to be some adjustments made going into tomorrow night's game. Um, you know, I think especially those turnovers in the neutral zone towards the end of the game there in the third period really hurt them and took some time away from their ability to be able to be in the offensive zone and get those quicker scoring opportunities that they were hoping to get. It was a great game between the two. As we were just about to send it down to our PA announcer, Tom Calhoun, as he's going to have the three stars of the game as well as the Budweiser goal of the game and the Canadian Tire player of the game. Now, Ben, here are the three stars of today's game. The game's third star with one assist and playing it a forward for Team Women's Sports Foundation, number 13, Brianna Decker. The game's second star with one goal and one assist. Playing at a forward for Team Adidas, number 24, Danny Cameronese. And the game's first star with one goal and two assists. Playing at a forward for Team Adidas, number 12, Kelly Panic. Be the first to know all PWHPA news and announcements including new secret Dream, Dream Gap Tour dates. Sign up for the PWHPA newsletter at pwhpa.com or follow us at PWHPA. Fans, thank you for joining us today. Be sure to tune in to CBC Sports' YouTube page to catch tomorrow night's action at the Enterprise Center. It's a 6 o'clock puck drop. On behalf of the PWHPA, Tom Calhoun saying good day and thank you for your support. And welcome back in to the broadcast booth. Patrick Kelly and Christy Kehoe with you. And Christy, you're seen right now as Team Adidas is taking the team photo. You can see it on the stream right now. But you see all those girls right behind them. And that's just great to see. This is really what this entire weekend's all about, is Absolute, those girls out there. Absolutely. I mean, I think some of those kids were maybe hoping we were going to see an overtime or a shootout, but uh, they got to see a lot of great hockey, and they'll get to see some more great hockey tomorrow night. It's, it's going to be a great game as we were at Centene tonight. We are going to be at Enterprise Center, as Christy just said, tomorrow at 6 o'clock. It should be a fantastic matchup. More seats for more people to watch some great women's hockey. And for Christy Kehoe, I'm Patrick Kelly as Team Adidas wins 3-1 over Team Women's Sports Foundation. Thank you for watching the Seeker Gap Tour live from St. Louis.